everyone and so happy to be talking to you guys. So as you can tell by the title of this video, this is a voluminous hair tutorial. So it's definitely not the first time that I've made a video about adding volume to hair. Volume is just so universally flattering on anyone, literally anyone. If you think about it, what does gravity do to everything on earth? It just kind of keeps us grounded, keeps us, you know, down. What does that do to our faces over time? It makes everything kind of droop down. So what volume does is you look airier, you look like you're standing taller, youthful, kind of careless, so much more movement in the hair. So when I was inspired to do this voluminous tutorial, I knew that I had to share with you guys the Get Lifted Root Spray by East Salon. This stuff smells amazing. I want to bathe in this. Most of you I'm sure have heard, or I hope you have heard if you've watched any of my videos, you've heard me talk about East Salon so, so many times. And if you watched my LA vlog just a couple weeks ago, uh, where we went to LA, we met with the people from East Salon, and I was just so inspired. And like I said, I definitely thought, you know, I need to go back to my favorite thing and do an updated video on how to add like proper volume to the hair. All I use is a blow dryer and a brush and a few products. Okay, so my hair is about 50 to 60% dry. There's definitely still a lot of wetness at the scalp and at the root, which is where we need it to have enough wetness so that we can still train the hair and really lift the hair. So I'm going to start with the Get Lifted Root Lift Spray by Isalon and spraying that all over my roots. And it smells amazing. So I feel when I use a root lifter, it almost doubles as like a dry shampoo because I feel like it so makes the blowout last so much longer. And not only that, you're left with incredible volume. So pretty awesome, right? <laughs> and the fact that it smells really clean, it doesn't smell necessarily like perfumey or like you just, you know, applied a styling product. I, it actually feels like, you know, your hair is like freshly washed, so that's what it smells like the second day, so that's awesome. So once I've massaged the product through, you can kind of see that even though with wet hair, it already wants to lift, so that means the product is working. So then I'm gonna go ahead and blow out my hair. I'm going to put my head upside down or over direct the hair in the opposite direction of where it's going to be laying, and that's what's already going to be creating some of that volume. So say the hair on this side is, you know, falling this way, I would blow it out in the opposite direction this way. So if you'd like to try some of these awesome Isalon products that I've mentioned today and a million times before, do check them out. Um, they're always so good to me and they have a 50% discount code for you guys. So when you're done, don't forget to check that out in the description box down below. So now that I've got the roots pretty dry, we're gonna go in with a round brush. I like to use a big, big <laughs> round brush on my hair. And the reason for that is because I have fairly straight-ish hair. Obviously I have a lot of like um, kinky kind of waves, but my root for the most part is straight. So um, I'll have a lot of clients thinking that the bigger the round brush, the bigger the volume, and that's not necessarily the case. So for someone that has really kinky, really wavy, curly hair, but still wants volume at the root, if you use this big brush, if you can see like, I'm never gonna get it as close to the root. So basically you're almost leaving a little bit that never gets brushed by the brush and you get airflow at it but you don't get like the tension from the brush so if you have very hard to rule hair very heavy hair I would use a smaller brush and that's just because you can get a lot closer to that root and really manipulate the hair in the direction you want it to go in another little handy tip with using a hairbrush that just a couple of days ago a client had a question and I was like wow I don't think I've ever explained this and it's kind of, to me, seemed like very common sense, but I figured if she asked, you guys probably have the same question. So a lot of people will say like, I will not even take a round brush to my hair because it'll get caught and stuck and it's super scary and I end up having to cut like a chunk of my hair off and that is super scary. So my tip for her was, when you are just trying to get root at the volume, you don't need to like wind the hair all over the brush. So when you grab that section, say I'm blow drying this section here, and say the blow dryer's um, aiming airflow this way, like towards the ends of the hair, and I'm grabbing this brush and I'm tucking it under here. The whole point is that we don't really necessarily twist. Do you see how I just got hair in there? Then that creates a big tangled mess. So 
you treat this as if it was like a flat brush with bristles coming up at the hair for even though you have bristles all around that's just to help you at the end when you try to bevel and it makes it go a lot of, a lot faster because technically it's like an endless sided brush there's not only one side that it works on so imagine just tucking that in there with the air flowing this way and you just come down then when you're at the end if you want a little bit of beveling then you can kind of twist still with the air on it and then you get beveling but when you tuck that in like at the hair base you just tuck that in don't move it don't try and like angle it once it's in there don't move it you just glide it down so if any of you have that challenge I hope that this has you know helped you understand that so okay so I'm gonna be using my hair parted down the middle as I usually do so one of the best tricks to add volume is to not blow dry with the part so with the part meaning that if the hair is falling this way I don't want it like blow out going this way because I'm never gonna get as much volume so what we do is we kind of trick the part and we're going to get a cross section like this over the top and this here will be about four to five sections so we're going to go across so I'm just gonna start with the front just because that's what you guys see the easiest so that is my first section and you see how it's across instead of like vertical that way so if you're good you would have clips and you can clip your hair out of the way So do you see how I was adding airflow to the bottom? It sounds counterproductive because it seems like I'm patting it down, but all I'm doing is adding heat to that um, root area because now we're going to flip it up. And the fact that this is warm now, this is going to react to the brush. So wherever I angle the brush now, the hair is going to take that shape since it's already warm. So now going in this way, now we're actually going to add a little bit of that beveling and roundedness and just not moving that brush, just keeping that in there. Once we've let go, go ahead and work on the ends, whichever side you want it to um, bevel in. I'm going to bevel it in towards the face. So I'm going to be doing the exact same thing for this section, trying to avoid letting any of this wetness or moisture still from this section of hair to touch this hair that's already dry and have already set in the shape you want it to be in. So once I have that top section pretty dry, I don't want it to get mixed in with the hair on the bottom that's still wet. And the reason why we did the top is to get some of that moisture that was still in the hair attacked first. That way we can really train that top hair. And now we give it a few minutes to set while we work on the bottom. I'm just going to go ahead and grab that into one big section. And I'm really just tucking this in, and this is just my technique. This isn't um, necessarily like the trick to get um, the best volume. But I just tuck that because it, it doesn't mess with any of the shape of anything we blew out. Um, I clip it this way so that there are no dents and you have your hair out of your way so you can work on these bottom sections. So now I just want to get this hair here like 99% dry. We don't have to worry so much about the volume um, on this hair under because with the weight of the hair on top, you're not going to see that. The only way you can add volume to the top with this hair is if you actually tease it. 
because no matter how much bounce I get up here, if that hair then falls on top, this will fall. So basically, just don't focus so much on the volume um, on the hair down here. All we want to do is smooth it out, add some beveling to the ends if that's um, the look you're going for, or if you want just a smooth, sleek blowout. For now, all I want to do is get all that moisture out and make it as smooth and sleek as possible. Okay, so now that the bottom section is done, I'm going to release that top section and see if there are any kinks. Just kind of go over like a few more sections and we are ready. As you can see that just by setting it like that, I have gotten a lot more volume. So as you can see, definitely more voluminous than I typically wear it, which I obviously like this style much more, but of course it does come with a little bit of effort. But obviously when you use the right products, it makes it that much easier. So the next step is going to sound almost a little bit counterproductive because we're trying to add volume. We want no weight to the hair, but in order to give it even more of that like brilliance and glamour, it, we do have to add some shine into the hair and especially like through the ends because we didn't focus on you know making it smooth and sleek necessarily we were just trying to give it that va va voom volume so i'm going to go in with sleek dreams smoothing balm and it's an anti-frizz that smooths from the inside out holding that shape that you've just created which is exactly what we want for this style And we don't need much, obviously. I'm just going to rub that all over my hands so that we don't get just like one pocket of um, intense product. And of course, as with all Esalon products, they smell absolutely amazing. Just so good. Like literally, like you just left like better than a salon. I feel like everyone always says your hair smells so good when you leave the salon, but I feel like they're just so like normal to me that I don't think of that as like ooh luxurious but all of these products really do make me feel like I smell different and I smell clean but also very like feminine and soft so it's not one of those like ooh too much hairspray you know kind of smells so. so anyway if you do have a little more time um, one day this week do try this out um, add a little volume to your hair and you will see that you feel like you were literally floating on clouds that day so um, I definitely know that uh, my moods <laughs> are set based on how good my hair looks. So if you'd like to try some of these awesome Esalon products that I've mentioned today and a million times before, do check them out. Um, they're always so good to me and they have a 50% discount code for you guys. So when you're done, don't forget to check that out in the description box down below. I've actually already stopped the video. I went and had lunch. I came back. I put on the smoothing balm and as you can see it's been about 15 minutes and my hair is still hanging up <laughs> pretty well. So um, basically if the hair kind of lasts that first 15 minutes it'll basically last because now it's cooled off and it's set. So once it's cooled off it's not going to really change shape unless in your, you're in you know intense humidity. Anyway, it's so good to sit here and talk to you guys um, about my absolute favorite thing hair. I love you guys so much. Please click here to subscribe if you haven't yet. It will just notify you of new videos and I will see you in the next video. Bye!